Hey, this is Dylan Francis. I'm on the Zach Sang Show. Okay, we talked about uh, so many things. TikTok, uh, pop music, dance music, um, how the internet works. If you don't know how to log on yet uh, to like your Facebook or anything like that. Um, we talked about old people. We talked about young people. Um, I guess uh, you should probably watch this just because you're going to learn so much. We also learned that um, Steve Carell and... and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Colbert and, and uh, Steve Carell were, or wait, is it Steve Carell? Yeah. yeah. Steve Carell and and, uh, and Colbert. Colbert was his understudy. Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Anyways, just watch it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Zach Sang Show. What is in here? Oh my God. A bunch of, uh, Fuck it, hey! a bunch of uh, the new merch. Yo, Gerald Inspire, Gerald yep. Co Colors? This is the, the Gerald collab that I have with Barney Cools. What? Sick, I am wearing this. Wait, big fan of Barney Cools. Oh, I they're work. awesome. Oh, great Incredible. stuff. Yeah. Same they've been they've been the best partners to work with on on that whole thing. Like they really just understand. Look at by the the quality. The quality's amazing. You, you can't beat it. And you can't. I have a couple uh I have a couple shirts and a couple hoodies from them. Dude, yeah, it it's really so it, comfortable. It is branded Gerald. Yeah. It's the Gerald it's Gerald. This is the Gerald line. Hello, beautiful human. We are here with Dylan Francis. Yeah, wait, by the way, yeah, we haven't I haven't seen you in so long. It's, by the way, I sold uh, I posted this uh, in in April, but um, I would sold a TV show for an animation TV show for Gerald. So, so is this yeah. like in celebration of him? Or? Well, I, I'd been doing it before, and uh, and then it just kind of it all came together. We went in for this pitch, and we sold it to Twentieth Century Fox, and we've been oh, we've been working on it. We got the animator going right now, and yeah, so uh, it takes a long. I just time can't believe a pinata changed your life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Who would have thought? I know. <laughs> Because, like, how does that make you feel? You're obviously on this music quest for many, many moons, and it, then all of a sudden, this f***ing pinata, things it's, start cooking. It's, it's, it's really mind-blowing that the, just thinking back to, like, the day of inception of, like, it being in this weird crevice in my, um, in my, uh, my house has this, like, really bizarre place that shouldn't fit anything. It has, like, an <laughs> Ethernet cable, but it's not like you'd put a desk in front of it because there's not enough space. There's two doors there. Um, so this pinata, I had gotten it from this meeting and I put it in there and I remember just opening Snapchat and yelling at it saying like, aren't you happy, Gerald? And then from that day, the videos and I, it, yeah, it just like, it spiraled. Different. Yeah. Everything's been different. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Gerald. <laughs> I mean, like really what, what does it feel like to have something that is literally paper and cardboard almost be worth more than you? It's very weird. It's very weird that just like what happens as well, where people start to, to think they know Gerald more than me because they <laughs> they like him more than me. So then, like, things that I'll do with him, they'll be like, Gerald wouldn't do that. And I'm like, I f***ing created him, okay? So don't you tell me. Maybe you're right, though. It's humbling. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's very, it, yeah, it's very weird. Like, people bring, you know, Gerald totems to shows and all that, and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome that it's, like, it took its own, like, it, it went past the music. I mean, on another level. I yeah. mean, an animated show coming, and this, look at this shirt, dude. Nice hat. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> nice hat. Yeah, I got a Gerald hat on. Hell yeah. Like, look at the quality of this shirt. Look at this. You see this? Oh, look at that. It's pretty good. Look, like, <laughs> do you have multiple Fresh. Geralds now, or is it still the same Gerald? I mean, it's, you know, do we want to talk about that? No, <laughs> no. We're, 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 so, pretend I didn't ask. We, no, no, we're actually, it's, it's actually funny. I'm interested because yeah. you f you realize something you realize you have something with this Gerald. It's a fluke of a piñata. <laughs> you weren't planning on it coming into your life. Do no. you do you track down who makes the Gerald and um, just buy everyone they have? There's a bunch on Amazon that we've we've bought a lot of them. <laughs> uh, I have bought so many of them. But the, this is the this is a funny story of how the the like the random videos of Gerald happened. So originally. The original Gerald is way bigger than the one that I have now. Got it. So the original one I had thrown out at Hard Summer one year to make a video of me being sad about him not being there. And then I wanted him to come back as like an angel, a <laughs> unicorn pinata. But then that unicorn pinata harasses me. And then somehow he's he actually was walking back and like then he has a beard. That was the idea that I had at the time when I threw the Gerald in there. A story that needed to be told. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so then when I find out that the only size Gerald that they have 
is the smaller one. In my mind, I'm like, continuity. We have to have continuity. (laughs) Kids will notice that this is a smaller Gerald. (laughs) So then I was like, okay, well, now so that it's a smaller one, I have to wait. Okay, so you know what? The unicorn idea wasn't there. The unicorn idea happened because of the smaller one. I think I was actually going to have like the Forrest Gump style one just show up. So what happened is I bought that Gerald because I was like, I'm going to make him harass me every night. And then I'm going to put the smaller version of that Gerald in the unicorn one and peel it open as if he was stuck inside of it. Like cocooning, yeah, I guess. This is the very weird uh, mind that I have. Yeah. I don't know if any of that made sense. I, I see it. You got I, it? Okay, I understand cool. it. But yeah, that's what, and then that was, but that also was, that story only happened because I was like, I need to make the continuity. I need to make sure people still believe that this is. That the main real Gerald, which then goes to the other thing of then that spiked a whole thing in my head. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but it made me think about like people who have dog Instagrams. Like, sadly, what happens when the dog dies? You know, gets to old age. It doesn't die, okay? okay. It gets to old age. <laughs> Just and unlikable. It, and it fall it falls asleep one time and it doesn't wake up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can actually answer that question. <laughs> you can? Yeah, because, you know, the. have you ever heard of the dog? You're very into internet culture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you very. heard of Swaggy P? He's, I think it's the dog with the glasses. Well, the pink ha- uh, pink, pink ears. The Wait, no, no. Pink ears? Husky with pink ears. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, wait, I have seen that one. They have another one ready to go. They've mm. been, like, grooming it, no pun intended, intended, in the back. I've heard that as well. And when he leaves, that's crazy. It will just go on forever. It's gonna be like when your fish died when you were younger, and your parents and, just and replaced they replace the fish. it with yeah. the same fish. Yeah, man. Don't worry, guys. Nothing happened. The Instagram community <laughs> cannot handle a dog death. No, yeah. I wouldn't be able to. I was thinking about that. It would, it would be. It would be sad. It'll shake the platform. Yeah. <laughs> but then a- that's that is kind of sad that the dog never gets to have like its big Instagram famous funeral. You're, you're right. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> There's no, like, whole What happened service. if someone just recreated me and then I never had the satisfaction, like, if, if it's just, like, a robot going on, I never got the satisfaction of seeing my friends come and mourn me. <laughs> because everybody I know that knows that's up, live. But, like, you know, I mean, I, rec- I went to one of my best friend's funeral recently. It was very sad, of course. Yeah. We were all crying, but I thought it was so beautiful watching everyone around. Like, it was such a, yeah. it's a, such a horrible moment, mm-hmm. but it's so beautiful for the person because every single person's there crying for them. And the pain is not with them anymore. It's with you. And it's, I don't know. It's just like, by the way, death is always hardest on the living, mm-hmm. but it does give you the opportunity to really see the impact that a, that a single person had exactly in people's lives. The, 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 the temple was like packed out. It was like, it was because I've wow. been friends with her for, since I was, when I was born. So it was just incredible. Cause we kind of lost path when we got to the age of 16, we reconvened back when I was like 20 something, but it was it was amazing to see that many people that I didn't even know that she impacted. So it's, special. it's yeah, it's super special. Do you have a lot of friends like that that are from your past, or did you really like as everything started taking off? Did you kind of go your separate ways? I I, t- I went my separate way. I because I, I what I did when I started making music is like I kind of shut every not in a mean way, but like I just I was at home. People would ask me to come and hang out and be like, hey, I'm I'm trying to start a career yeah, you're focused <laughs> i never said that but i was like hey i'm just i'm working on music i don't have time right now and i was super focused so i i did lose it like it's a very lonely thing to do because you have to be very selfish and you have to be very you gotta be putting in those hours until you get to the point where gerald and exactly your life. Then you can get a gerald <laughs> and a music career and a, well the you know the music career first but that th- parlayed into gerald, <laughs> gerald. <laughs> <laughs> this, it, it, just like saying that, like all of this whole sector of this conversation is around a freaking pinata. Well, I mean, the, think about this too. I, I have another character that I made, DJ Hansel. That that was another one too, where people would get mad at me about certain things that I would say about that character because they would think that they would. It's this deep house character that I have, <laughs> and he's still around somewhere. And his whole his whole thing was like always taking it one deeper, and uh, <laughs> and um. <laughs> It's just it, like that. I even booked shows as that character, you know, as not myself playing not my music either. But DJ Hansel's. DJ Hansel's one like just playing deep house music, how and you, I played shows, and they were all like sold out as that character. But, but how do you go deeper once you've already hit the bottom? That, I mean, that's you know, um, I don't have my glasses here, so I have to cover my eyes. But I can do his voice. But it's like you know, if you, if you ever want to release some music, is that you you want people to hear? You just drop it in the ocean. Wait for one person to find it, and then, you know, the monopoly effect will happen. <laughs> Dominoes going, and 
So there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how you go deeper. That's deep. <laughs> yeah, maybe launch it into space. <laughs> <laughs> Once it's up there, you that record, you got yeah, you, you someone's got to go find it and bring it back down. <laughs> it's a prize piece. <laughs> That's like real performance art. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, what would you consider these characters? And is it a? Do you utilize these characters as like a new extension for music? Do you utilize it as like? Do you use them for yourself to keep it fresh? I think it's just yeah, it's to keep keep. Fresh. Yeah. <laughs> As he was, <laughs> he, he like hey, hesitated. He's like, I like that. <laughs> but just wondering, like, no, now- it's it's exactly that. It's it's social commentary. Um, it was definitely creating the DJ Hansel character was, um, was social commentary on like house music stuff. I've even done that with one of my songs. Like, um, I have a new mixtape that's that's out, and one of the songs on it, still not butter, is, <laughs> is it's fan. a continue. Thank you. It's a continuation of the song called Not Butter, and that song originally was made to just make fun of. Songs where it's like, I got pants on now. I got pa-. like there's songs in house music, but that take themselves way too seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I made that song. Yeah. It took me seven days to come up with the lyric. I took my pants off now. And so I wanted to make a song that's equally as like what. So that's when I was like, I can't believe it's not butter. That's the stupidest thing to say before a drop. And then that's why I made the, the next version of that. <laughs> but, you, it, you know, would you consider the people who release records that are, the lyric is, you know, I just took my pants off right now. Is that music? Is that art to you? Well, I mean, I, I look, I'm going to go back to like one of my favorite songs on the internet ever. That was like the beginning of the internet was the shiz. I was just going <laughs> to yes. thank you for saying You're that. welcome. <laughs> one of my favorite. And it, that's like a weird techno record too. It's a yeah. joke, but it's so, it's, it, it, it gets stuck in your head. Yes. But, shiz. But, it's the way oh. that he says it. <laughs> He's dressed up as like if anyone hasn't seen this video, it's him dressed up as a as a girl. She has glasses on, and it's the parents talking to to her. I, I think it's a, yeah, right. And 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 uh, it's a and they're like you got to do something with your life, and she's like I only want shiz. And then the beat starts, and it's them. Oh my god, it's so good. And then it's like these ones suck. These ones are cool. <laughs> these ones suck. These ones are cool. Yeah. Shiz. <laughs> By the way, that deserves to come back. I want that song to come back. First, whoever created it, I wonder if they truly but know that they ushered in a whole... Tiga, Tiga was definitely like one of those guys that made like really good techno records that had those jokey lyrics in it. Like, I think he... I think he... Did he make a song called Shoes before as well? Yeah. I think so. He did. He made a song about shoes and and a bunch of other songs, but... Like all of his stuff is kind of that too, and he does performance art as well. Like he's done, he's done a video online where where um, he goes in and talks about how he doesn't even um, like make the music anymore or something like that in studios. It's really he's he's really funny. He's I, definitely like a performance art musician, and he shoes. Yeah, and he does. I think he has a record called Shoes. I'm positive. <laughs> So he may have he may have heard that song and was like, "This deserves to be a record." I mean, like, it is wild to think that that one internet moment because I remember being in seventh grade and everybody passing that around and playing in the hallways. Yeah. I mean, it was probably one of the first viral yeah. moments. It's pretty crazy to think about. We've come a long way. Yeah, it, I remember downloading on Kazaa and all that stuff. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. Dude. All the all the funny videos on there, and then music, and then the, even when you downloaded something that was wrong, and we Bill Clinton being like, "I did not," <laughs> but you can download yeah. this MP3, and you're like, "What is this ad?" <laughs> that was really some of the beginning stages for the content that you create today. Still, yeah, yeah, definitely. As like, do you consider all under Dylan Francis because the comedy and the music they play into each other? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I feel like it's all kind of one umbrella. Um, of of me, <laughs> all different sectors of your all brain, di- all different sectors of like what I'm. I've always been interested in. Like when I was in uh, high school, I had this class called New Genres, and um, it, it it was so much fun because it. So, you know, actually, I have a bone to pick with this school that I went to, um, <laughs> Loxa. They actually invited me back recently uh, for an anniversary, and they were like, "Hey, like we want to invite you back, and you should play because like you're one of the alumni that's." Big gone deal. really well. Well, the thing is, I didn't go to a music program uh, <laughs> there. Okay, so that's first one. So no, I'm not going to play music when I was at the visual arts program. Two, I tried to transfer out of the visual arts program because I hated it so much. 
and they didn't let me transfer out because I had D's in my my visual arts class. They had separated GE and visual arts. So you would go until like 12 and then during the rest of the day you would take your visual arts uh, elective. Got it. And that was every single day you'd have a different elective class. So I tried to transfer to theater. I got in everything. They were stoked to have me. And my stupid ass visual arts teacher didn't let me go. She was like, you have to raise your grades if you want to get in there. And then at that point, I was like, well, I'm fucked because I hate painting class. Yeah. I don't know why I took fashion design. I was making dresses. <laughs> but I wasn't because I had a D in yeah. the class. Yeah. Well, were you making? Why did I Nothing. take that class? I don't know. So, by the way, <laughs> isn't that really ironic how it always works out? Yeah, it's very weird. But but to, to basically, you know, talk about the question that you had was I always wanted to be an actor. Like, I really did. And I wish I, I mean, I guess it's better that I didn't. I don't know. I'll never know. But you kind of do it now. And that's the, the, the beauty of like where I am so thankful for where I am in my career because now I have that ability to, to make music and then I get to like make my own YouTube videos or somehow get to star in like what would Diplo do or, you know, get to make an animation show. So, I mean, it's, it's incredible the what, you know, hating that school can do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you always want to be an actor even while you were like creating your first records? I mean, you helped revive a, a freaking genre, dude. Run yeah. tone, bro. I know. I mean, well, I never thought like, no, no. So no, I was never like, I'm going to be an actor. Like, did you see music as a way to get to acting? No, no, no. It, so what happened was, th so I think with YouTube, I never really understood YouTube as, as what it was to like. I always was like, all right, we can just put music there. That's the place to put music. And then we have SoundCloud and that was it. And it was, it was never like, I'm going to go out and do acting later on or anything like that. I never had thought about it. It was until I believe Vine came around and Vine comedy started happening. And that was where I was able to use that other part of my brain that I had just hadn't really been using. I mean, I guess I've been using it for music since it's the creative side. I don't know. But it was, that was what opened up and was like, oh my God. This remind and back to that new genres class. We could do anything we wanted in new genres. So that was the class that I did acting in. <laughs> so with my friend Will, we would make ah. joke videos. Like we would we would make this joke video. We made this we made a um a Laguna Beach parody. So like we played every single character and we recreated like the intros of like Jessica Schmanderson. <laughs> like we made up all the stupid names and like the 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 trope of the girls were that they were always eating hot pockets full and throwing up in the club and it would be the full hot pocket and then the guys would always be too drunk to do anything with their girlfriends and everyone would get mad and but then they'd kiss at the end so Probably. during that time we were like, was, i know sorry it's really stupid but at, during that time we just kept making like those videos would have actually gone onto youtube yeah. if youtube ex existed when i was going to new genres in at loxa i think you should find the videos and you should i post know them today. I no i tried i can't find them loxa doesn't have it no i don't think so they want you back there well th during provide. this time we didn't have like i feel like yeah. computers weren't really utilized yet no i, I what totally year understand was that? that that man it was uh 20 20 2008 no it had to be, yeah, yeah something like that, 2007. Like, we still had the IMAX, I think. Like, the, the colored IMAX, like, like the, the orange, like, blue. Yeah. yeah, the ones that were just that. Mm -hmm. And I think that we had the bigger, like, G5s that were the really sh plastic uh, that, yeah. that were gray. I used to use this in video class. Yeah. Well, so I used, and I used to take, yeah, um, visual arts, man. I used to take, like, 3D design, uh, so many other classes, like Photoshop classes. But can you look back now and be happy? I mean, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to talk that much to the school because it definitely like helped with a lot of artistic stuff yeah. that I do. Like, I'm able to use Photoshop to my ability that that I gained in that class, and and I'm able to you know um, understand how things should be designed. I think, and uh, I and I, and I gained that from visual arts. I wouldn't have gained that if I went to the you know theater program. I probably wouldn't have been. You know. So are you telling me you wouldn't have been able to create this unicorn getting out a rainbow? You're yeah, you're right. <laughs> without that class? That I mean that that drawing is from a guy named Ian Stevenson, but I think that I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't have been able to tell him, hey, can you make the, the <laughs> rainbow shooting out of his ass and put Gerald's eye in the middle <laughs> um and write Disturbed. magic is real. Yes, okay. So I shouldn't the, school is great. <laughs> Sorry, Loxa. Go to I just, school. I had a like when they asked me that, I got I got really angry because I, I was like it. I was like, yeah, come on, faculty. You remember when I tried to take theater? 
<laughs> and the question is probably no because all the teachers are <laughs> yeah, gone. They, they, yeah. For, yeah, true. They are. <laughs> they, I really, <laughs> dude, I get flashbacks to my high school just having this conversation. And so many times I got called down to the principal's office for getting in trouble for talking about my teachers on the radio. Oh, or, I got some other goods. You want some good goss from my school? I used to Ferris Bueller my uh, attendance. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How? I would go into my, so Dr. Scott, uh, rest in peace. I think he died from cancer. Um, but when when I was at school, he uh, I would go into his his room like Doctor Scott, my computer it ran out of battery last night. I need to write an essay. Is it cool if I use your computer for a bit and just print it out? Or I forgot what I was saying. And he was like, Sure, Dylan, anything for you. <laughs> He'd leave to go do something, and I'd I just knew how to sign in, and I would find my attendance, and I would cl I would clear the A's, but I wouldn't. Cl I actually was still on attendance probation just because I didn't want to make it seem. Like, I was just clean. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, you, you, you didn't want to, like, make it too obvious. Which was still bad. Um, but, yeah, I would go in. Oh, dude, there were so many times. I, I don't understand why he didn't. was like, what is happening with your computer, man? Why does it keep dying? <laughs> every keep two weeks. On mine. <laughs> but shout out to him. He was the, he, he, every single time I went in, he was like, he didn't even care. He was like, yeah, go for it. I'll go get some water. I'll give you your space. And he'd close his door. Maybe he knew. You could, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he just really liked me, and he was like, "You know what? This kid deserves this." <laughs> I feel for him. I feel for him, man. I'm gonna give him this. <laughs> Th thank him. Yeah, there was uh, there were some other bad things that we did, but anyways, enough about that school. <laughs> is magic real? It is. How? So? It's so real because we're living in a simulation, <laughs> and <laughs> it's weird, man. Is the, it a simulation? Do you I, believe that? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Do you believe that there's like a giant somebody like above us all with the globe? No, and their yes, hands? it's more. It's like I'm half joking. Yeah, but I don't know what I believe in anymore. <laughs> Gerald, coincidence the power is of crazy. Gerald. Coincidence or just the the way that the that life's supposed to lead you yeah. on certain things. It, it is pretty nuts that the w the way that coincidence happens. What? How does magic play into this new body work? Because this is going to be a part one of two parts, right? Well, yeah, this, this is the final part. So we put out part one. This is the final, like, full on. Got it. The last two songs come out um, November 15th. And uh, um, the, the last two songs are this song, Salsa Baton. It's like a classic Moombatone song. And then this other one called Barely Breathing with Vera Hot Sauce, this Swedish songwriter. She's incredible. Also, her name... It's right. just amazing. Hot, mm -hmm. Vera Hot Sauce. Like, amazing. <laughs> I want to put it on um, something. And just Swedish vocals to me are like so intoxicating. Anytime you hear any Swedish vocals. What like, is it? It's just uh, recently someone said that it's like they're delicious to, to listen to. And they really are. Like, you know, um, I don't know. There's like Mo. She reminds me yeah. of Mo where her voice is just like it's this really nice indie pop voice and it's very easily digested. So I guess that's why the delicious part. I get that. Comes with that. It's like, I don't know. And it's like, it's something you could play to your grandma and she won't be offended. That's why I always think of like <laughs> indie pop is that, vocals. Is, but is that your goal with what you're making? No. I mean, I mean, with that song, yeah, it was like, it was something that, that really everyone could listen to that like isn't too pop and it isn't too indie. It's kind of like right in the middle. Like, I feel like Lean On was that type of record. Totally. Oh, yeah. Lean it's, On, Cold you know Water too. You know those yeah. it's like. It's not full on pop. It, I don't know. It, it, I get it. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, I, I even the last like um, I think Cold Water with Mo like that was yeah. another record that like really Love right in the middle. Record. But that's where I like I feel like Swedish people's yeah. voices have that ability to, to do low? that. I never yeah. thought of it like that. Yeah, it's it's very it's, it's yeah. Weird. Yeah. yeah, because like think of like all of Tove's songs. Yeah, they're all those are that. songs that could be alternative and they could be pop. Exactly. It's and it's it's mostly and then even think about like and Swedish people are all like I feel like the best songwriters. Oh, totally. I mean, dude, Max Martin. He is a national Swedish still treasure. going. Ilya, all of them are. F yeah, it's. I feel like it's, it's the wild. way that they interpret English. They they interpret it in a weird, sexy way because they don't. Dude. They they they're like they're taught it, but they speak it their own. Like I don't know. I, the way that they take out certain words, but it still makes sense. Do you <laughs> do you believe that like somebody like Max Martin or Ilya Savin or any of those Swedish people, right? Anybody a part of that, like they have like they're named like Wolf something. Wolf. <laughs> like they're, they're like a pack. I don't know. I, Anyone named Wolf is always is yeah. always a genius. Come on. <laughs> don't bite me. <laughs> um, 
There ha- no, I actually agree with that, though. Do, does it? <laughs> 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 right. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, come on. <laughs> Wolfgang Puck? Wolfgang Puck? Yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf- well, that's not his real name. Um, well, it's- I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get the credit. His name wasn't Wolf, <laughs> so <laughs> never mind. <laughs> so... Do you believe that their talent and ability is in the songwriting? Is it in the production? Like, I I think it's in the songwriting for sure. Um, I mean, there's definitely a lot of uh, incredible Swedish music producers. Yeah. Like Alesso's Swedish, and I think his music's great. He's so, dope. Um, but I do think that songwriting abilities through my musical career, I think it's been around seventy five to you know maybe higher that it's a Swedish person somehow involved in the song, and that's how it's like amazing. Is there a session throughout your entire life that really stands out to you as, like, one that you learned a ton from? Um. That was, like, really impactful? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there was one with, uh, I think she changed her name. It was Liz, it's Liz Y2K, right? Yeah, Liz Y2K. I remember telling, like, we were in the studio. This was a long time ago. This was, like, 2013 or something like that. I remember telling her certain things to sing. And when I got back home, I listened to the thir- certain things that I told her to sing. And that was the day I realized I should never tell anyone what to sing <laughs> because my songwriting ability <laughs> is not up to par yet. No, no, no. Where are we at? It's, it's been six years. I think we're like still, we're kind of like this. Like sometimes I'll say some certain good things and sometimes it just, I'm not hitting the right, I'm not hitting the bullseye. <laughs> But uh, at least you know. But yeah, and then I'll t- I will legitimately say that in the studio when people are like, "Hey, do you do you like how this sounds?" I'm like, "You just do your thing." <laughs> Afterwards, I'll leave, and that's when I'm actually like, I'm good at being an A and R rather yeah. than being a person that's in the studio right there. Like, I'm good one- with taking the song out and be like, "I don't like this. I don't like this. Change this. Change this. Change this." So it's like more producer since I am yeah. making the music, and then executive producer of like. I think we need to do this type of melody and I think it needs to I think you need to say a s- different line here. I'm not going to tell them what to say just cuz i I'll probably tell them the wrong thing to say. <laughs> but, but just be different. Yeah, exactly. So how do you want to hear a song when you want to touch it? Like do you want it acoustic? Do you want there to be tempo to it? Yes. Like- I usually want it to be like the v- the Vera Hot Sauce song originally that was a demo from my friend Arye and it was acoustic guitar. And it was her singing on it. And right when I heard it, I was like, I know exactly what I can do to this. Send me this record. We'll, we'll work on it together. Um, and so that is usually how it happens with a lot of my records. Like Still Not Butter, that one I made uh, as an intro for the tour that I had with Alice in Wonderland. Um, and then uh, DFR was different. But yeah, usually when it's like stuff with songwriters on it, um, I think it's better to, to, for me not to have touched the track yet. Because I'll overproduce it because I'm such I'm such like a dance producer. So I'll like add too many melodies over it and, and take up too much space where the vocals could be. Do you like working with vocals or would you rather put a song with limited vocals, mostly instrumental? I love working with vocals. My favorite thing still to this day is remixing because I like taking someone else's idea and then turning it into something totally different. Something totally different. Yeah. What is a sign of a good remix to you? Is it something that can can be... Uh, competitive with the original keep original aspects of it so mm-hmm. that the original listeners are like they still have that uh that like oh i this is the, st- the same they, song they but know. it has like the different elements that are like oh i like this because it's the dancier version and if i hear this in a club i'm gonna really like it that's 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 what i think is is like a good remix like i think one of the best remix still to date that i've done is the i like it remix <laughs> like i didn't i still kept a lot of it there i changed some of the drums and whatnot but i think with like the drop there's still like that vocal callback that helps yeah. you like it and it's not too aggressive so would you listen to your remix over the original um yeah that's a good question i i, I think i would listen to both <laughs> <laughs> i can only answer if I'm I wanna, so sorry. If I want to listen to one song, I must... I'd listen to them at the same time. <laughs> it's lined up. Oh, it's good to know that you want to take seven minutes out of your day to listen to both records to feel complete and full. I would... I, I like my version better, but that's only because I play it so often, so I sped it up. So now when I listen to the original version and it's slower... Oh, it's boring. Yeah. It doesn't have as much energy in it for me to, like, bounce around mm-hmm. to it. You need that the juice. Exactly. So, back to magic. 
Yes. What are you thinking? Honestly, are you Bucket making hat? these songs for the radio? Are you making them for the live shows? Are you making them just for yourself? Th- this this one is definitely for live shows. Like I feel like a lot of music producers in dance music had completely gone away from making any stuff to play at music festivals. And and which is fine, but then you would have to wait for your song to get remixed so that you can play it at a music festival. Like for me, coming over is still one of the worst songs I'll play at a music festival. Why? Because it's so slow. It works on on listening, but when you play it live, it's like, brr, <laughs> and you're like, all right, and everyone yeah. there is kind of like they don't know what to do because that's I'm, a lull. Like I'm playing a festival set, and if I'm playing like one twenty eight BPM records, and people are like, Woo! you cut yeah. the in half, yeah, and then you do that, and they're like, all right, I like this song, but I don't know what to do. So, um, but then don't you remix your own song then? Yeah, I've done that before. Um, but this one was more just like, I, I, I feel like a lot of music producers were just, they had completely gotten away from making like fun music to play at festivals. That's just there already done. Let's play it at a music festival. Let's not wait for any remixes. And, um, that's just really what I wanted to do. And, uh, it, it also was, um, originally like I was going to name it. This mixtape is fire too, which is like my old mixtape yeah. but i didn't want to keep remaking this. <laughs> like i feel like i, I don't want to be like uh you know the movie industry that's like guys reboot <laughs> here we go <laughs> reboot so i wanted to structure the project as a brand new thing and that's why i wanted to create like magic is real create a whole new world around it and and but also just go back to like making festival stuff and and having it for those those dance kids that that i feel like are kind of neglected on that side of because everyone switched to making i pop turned into dance music Mm -hmm. i guess Mm -hmm. they both like kind of ate each other for a second and were like i don't know what is dance and what's pop now because like lean on really kicked that off where everything yeah that that's every record now that's a pop record is somewhat of an amalgamation of that record and then with latin music popping off hard like that just brings it even more that you know we're going to stay in that tempo for a long time I was say, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Because I feel like I can't, I can't really tell. Oh, no. I, I mean, I love it. I, but I'm also a different person. Like, if I was younger and I was 18 and I was only listening to dance music, I'd hate it. I'd be like, wow, no, f- that, f- puck music. Yeah, you know? sellouts. Exactly. Yeah. But that's what you think when you're, you're younger and, you, you, like, Against you want to keep your, your, your dance music to yourself. And, like, if anybody, if some person starts getting big, it's like, it's that that thing that'll happen to, to certain kids. I was, I, and that's why I know that I was exactly like that. When bands that I really liked that were indie that started to blow up, I'm like, they f- suck now, bro. <laughs> Damn, man. Ew, you listen to them? You don't listen to like the Chippy Chippy Kawa band now? <laughs> They're like, who's that? I'm like, yeah, exactly. You don't know. So like, why? It's, you know, it's like that that music elitism. So how do you balance it? I mean, this is. I feel like this is a perfect. One of the, there was another pop record that, that it just wasn't ready. It wasn't a pop record. It was a house record that like had a female vocal on it would be considered like, I guess, alternative house pop record that was supposed to be on it. So it was going to be two pop records in that. And that I think is just like a, a, it's, it's fun for the, the dance music fan to have all those. It's like, here's the stuff for, so that the dance music kids can feel happy and here's the other stuff that's like really fun pop music that I really enjoy rather than it, it, you know, I feel like with a lot of people just putting out pop records, it just misses the dance fan a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, like maybe I'm the crazy one. I, I do understand genres of music, but I'm like this. I, again, I feel like I'm like one of the only people that I genuinely believe that like the pop music genre is should be a collection of everything, right? Mm-hmm. So like there should be dance records in there. Absolutely, the structure is what makes. But people get scared song. when they when they hear pop, they get like it yeah. just it has a connotation to get other kids scared if they're like, I only listen to indie. Well, not pop. Yeah, yeah. It's I don't listen to Taylor Swift. Total stereotype. Like, you can listen to Taylor Swift even if it's pop. Yeah. There's, there's good stuff. You're probably the thing that's funny too is that person is probably listening to them and being like, it's a bop. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's a bop. <laughs> but you can dress those formatics that make that song like but wait, really great. There, this is actually another good point though. This reminds me of emo music. I mm. used to listen to emo music back then. I would listen to My Chemical Romance. Wow. I would listen to like Sum 41. I wouldn't tell my friends. 
because I'd get made fun of. Because at that certain time, it wasn't cool to listen to emo music. It was cool to listen to Kings of Leon or <laughs> like the Islands or, uh, you know, like, oh, I'm trying to think of like the other, like the Shins. Like those are the cool bands to listen to, or at least in my friend group. Yeah. You could, like if you listen to emo music, your friends would just make fun of you. But now, since it's past, like this always happens with with music. Like I bet all those old house records, like the Robin S record, I bet you that record was made fun of a long time ago. Sandstorm, made fun mm. of a long time ago. Now people listen to that. It's it, You have to get past a certain point where it's it's not cliche anymore and it's just, it's it's gone past the point of being labeled as anything because you have to label it in the now and then when it goes, you don't have to because it's old. I understand that. And you can listen to it. It's weird. And Think like... I don't know, it, like certain records, like even when I put out Money Sucks Friends Rule, I remember kids hating on me so much, so, so much. There was a record on there with um, with uh, Cam that I made and a bunch of my fans got super pissed off at it because it was like a poppy house record. It's still one of my biggest records and now kids will be like, oh man, I love that old record. It's but like, in the moment they hated it. Yeah. Because it was they didn't want to fall because for the label. Because it was brand new. It, yeah. And they always want you to go back to something else. And then I cuz and I and I remember a specific moment that I did that to one of the bands that I loved the most ever and it was The Strokes. And it was that record that they put out that had the black cover with the red and silver lines. <laughs> they put that record out and I hated it. And then cuz I cuz I didn't want to hear new Strokes stuff like that. I wanted to hear like the old garage stuff. And then a month later, I couldn't put that record down. But that's just, I don't know. It happens when a, an artist gets older and, you know, you you just, you always latch onto that old, there's always something. That's why that's why the movie industry keeps doesn't, doing reboots. Re because that's what because they feel people Because people are always want. latching onto, like, the old times because people don't remember the shitty stuff that happened back then. <laughs> they only remember the good things. Yeah, which is those songs. Yeah. So, like, that, is it a struggle when you put new stuff out to stay inventive and fresh for yourself when you know that there's people out there who could be wanting something totally different or stuff that is old and dated to you? I think that that with what I just explained, I tried to like maneuver that really well. And that's why I made it like with two songs. Like that's why for me, this mixtape is fire did really well because it had a pop song masked as a pop music that I love. Mm -hmm. I legitimately love pop music. Um, that the, like coming over is like a, that's a you know that's an indie pop record and it's a guy wailing on a guitar talking about how he wants a girl to come over <laughs> you know so i think masked in there it, it made it so that it wasn't just like here's a single you have to listen to this it was that hey here's this here's this work you can listen to all these songs that you want to it'll satiate whatever you're looking for and then hopefully you'll brand out to yeah. other things which is Hopefully, whatever person was looking for a Mumatone record, Salsa Baton's that record for them. And then they go and listen to Barely Bring. They're like, well, you know what? It's not my favorite record, but I like it because I got to listen to Salsa Baton, and that's the record for me. Or DFR. Oh, this is this house record that I really wanted Dylan to make uh, that, uh, you know, I can finally listen to. Oh, I can listen to Salsa Baton too. Oh, now I can find this pop record. This is actually cool. This whole thing's fun. So it, 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 it eases the listener into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, give them what they want. Exactly. And then they experience the new. Yeah. Because I want to, I want to appease every single person. It's impossible to do. Yeah. It sucks. I feel really bad when I put out a record and some person's like, "Man, this, like, it hurts. It sucks. Yeah, I don't want to see that." But that's just the that's what happens. So do you end up making mu music just to satisfy you? I definitely always make music for myself. I'm never trying to make music for anybody else. It's more of just like the project was made to be like, "All right, cool. We're gonna put this out in this certain way." I know that my dance music fans will have a way more fun time listening to this than me just putting out pop single after pop single after pop single. Like, I, I don't know. What is Go Off? Do you think that's a pop hit? Or is that just a I mean, TikTok fluke? The, 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 the vocal, when I heard it, it was just innocuous. Like, it's just such a good, like, it gets stuck in your head immediately. So, um, I mean... Definitely, I mean, it's it doesn't it doesn't have chords in it, but it definitely is like it's a poppy record because it's like, I don't know, I it could be a pop record. But I could see people. Isn't that the crazy thing? Is that like we do live in a world where the definition of a pop record has totally changed? Yeah, it does. It, it has. I mean, going on a TikTok, it's crazy that TikTok can just like 
do TikTok that. is somewhat of like the radio influencer as well now. Totally. They're an A&R in their, their own way. But yeah. I think what we're going to need to figure out is like what is bull squash and what is legitimate growth, right? Yeah. Because I think as TikTok continues to sit there, people are going to figure out that system. Yeah. You know, labels are throwing millions of dollars on how to oh, yeah. grow they're from already, the inside. <laughs> they're already going in there. Oh. What do we need to do? <laughs> Since Lil Nas was in this studio months ago, yeah, they were working the back end of that and how to freaking push things out on timelines. And by the way, I don't know 100%, but I do believe that the legalities behind TikTok, like, it's not as restrictive as like a, a Twitter, right? Or an yeah. Instagram in terms of how you can manipulate the back end and algorithmic type shit. Yeah. It's a Chinese company. They have a whole different set of bylaws and rules and everything. Yep. So... I'm just being real, sitting here of like, <laughs> what is legitimate growth and yeah. deserves to skyrocket, and what is like some dude like in some office working like SEO <laughs> and hashtags on. But that's, I mean, that's what just happens with any social media that comes out. At like, yeah, like Vine at the beginning was kind of like that too, where, um, and I know there's always the this, the um, the comparison, and, and it really is Vine. TikTok is exactly like Vine now. Like I remember all the songs that blew up from Vine, uh, "Tiptoeing in My Jordans." <laughs> um, uh, what else? Uh, "Turn Down for What" blew up on there before it oh, even yeah. hit and Spotify they, or anything. The, the drop you would get yeah, that on every, the Vine. Every, yeah, yeah, on the drop, someone would get messed up. <laughs> yeah. Someone would either it was like some football recap or something like that. So I definitely think that it's like you know they're gonna they're gonna figure out what it is on on TikTok and then it's gonna get it's gonna get. Um, it's going to get oversaturated it, it happens on every like even on instagram you know like there's dance videos that were happening for a long time where it was like let's get an influencer to dance to the song and, and hopefully then it causes everyone to start dancing with whatever song they're going to dance to um but i think it's just like a new thing will come out that'll be the new and like it i it always happens there's always some new random little a and r thing yeah that is the 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 next like non-label thing but then the label goes in and is like hey <laughs> we're gonna ruin this yeah, this is ours now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're messing up our airspace okay this is mine now <laughs> but by the way like it's somebody like you it's, but i love it i love that tiktok is that ability right now it's so amazing to see that i really do think like and i think to to answer your question i think people people know the difference between like legit and not. legit and not yeah like Lil Nas, I, I was so stoked because I was on TikTok before and I saw that song so much and I was so happy when that like got back on the billboard. It was like, it was such a triumph for all of TikTok that uh, we're like, we did it! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fight the power that be! <laughs> so, um, and then and give then, in to the power that be. And then, and then he made amazing records afterwards, yeah. you know? Like he proved That's everybody wild. wrong. It reminds me of Ray Shremmerd as well. Like they had that song, No Type, and I remember mm -hmm. everyone saying, that they weren't going to do anything. I remember getting them on Get Low. Holy crap. Nobody remembers that I got them on Get Low because so many people made fun of me for getting them on Get Low. Because the internet put them in that light. Because well, dance fans get angry when any... If, if there's a dance song that came out and then there's a, there's a vocal that gets put on top of that, uh-uh. Don't you disrespect the dance fans like that. Like, very similar to like classic rock fans. Yeah. The big rule on classic rock radio is to never talk over intros because people want to hear the entire thing. Yep. So you can't pollute the record. Exactly. There's the, there's the little little things for every single uh, genre. People want it's, it. Yeah. They want purity. I get it. Yeah. But exactly. I, well, it's, but it's funny because some person, like, imagine saying to somebody, yo, Ray Schremer ruined Get Low. No, they didn't. <laughs> because The original it, record is a, is a touch away. <laughs> How did you even get to this record? <laughs> Why are you listening to this? But, Go away! <laughs> but most of mainstream America knows it with the Ray Shrimmer version of it. No one knows the Ray Shrimmer version. I don't. I don't think it didn't really. It didn't really travel that far because so many people were like pissed off about it. For I, and I but think does the, that piss you off a little bit that like that energy held that song back from seeking its yeah, full potential? It definitely was a bummer. It 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 was really like it was. I remember talking to my manager at the time and because my. Like, I was reading all the comments on my Instagram, and I was like, I showed it to him, and I was like, dude, I think I got to take this, po like, I'm, like, I, I'm i embarrassed right now. I don't know why I'm embarrassed, because I think this record's amazing, but people are, like, really making, I, I don't think it was more than 95% of the, or I, it was at least 95% of the people saying that it sucked, they hated it, they hated these dudes, they hated me, why would I do this to the record? It was, it was oh, brutal crap. at that point. Yeah. Was, wow. It, dude, it was really bizarre. 
And I actually, I remember taking the post down and I remember my manager being like, dude, you can't have people dictate you thinking something is good. I was like, that's very true. Like, if I think something's good, I should, I should stand behind it and yeah. I should have stood behind it. But the internet rallies, man, they, dude. they, it's tough. It makes you like, it, it, it hits you in the core. Do you understand first, obviously a monumental moment because then you learn moving forward. Like yeah. you're not going to let the internet dictate your own. No, art. you can't. But are you, do you understand the internet more today than you, you have in the past? I think so. I mean, it's an ever changing landscape though. So maybe not. But by the way, like you being ahead on TikTok is exactly what somebody in your position should be doing. And that's what I think your biggest talent is, is understanding where people are going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know where they're at today, but it's where they're going to be tomorrow. Yeah, but then there's also that phrase, I feel like Kanye said it, where it's like, if you're too ahead, it's like, it's actually bad. Okay, I love Kanye West, but I think uh, yeah, he yeah. thinks- Well, this was before everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, because I, I, I'm a firm This wasn't recent. <laughs> I believe that he believes that Never he's just- mind. You're right. Decades. I can't. Well, that was one of my favorite because I always, I always remember that, and it reminds me of Diplo. Diplo is always like right at that perfect yeah, cusp. Dude. Tiesto too. Yeah, I, for a long time. And and, I, and and what I think is the, the the thing to to see from both of them is that they are extremely open with who they're talking to. They're always looking to younger kids. Yeah. That because they're they're always making fun, interesting, cool stuff. And um, Tiesto does the same thing. He's always in touch with like a lot of new producers and same with Diplo and that's that and I've always learned that from them like it's always just seeing what what's what the fun I mean and that's always it too like what's what's the fun thing that's happening uh. I always just want to have fun on the internet so when I found like I remember when when people were telling it's when people were telling me about TikTok uh and they were they were like they were saying that it wasn't the singing thing and I remember downloading it and being like oh yeah this is amazing because my feed started being like just funny stuff without it being like people like singing and yeah, no music doing whatever. Yeah, it wasn't musically universal so. content. Exactly. So, the internet and your music. I mean, it's all so deeply connected. <laughs> yeah, it is. Do you do you believe in the radio anymore? Do we see do we seek radio out as a legitimate platform to um, share music? Yeah, of course. I think that that still is the sustaining like factor if a song is a hit you still believe that yeah rock hard yeah cool of shit. course a lot of people i mean not a lot of, i think a lot of people do some people don't it's usually the people don't have it that don't believe it uh, they're wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's really how you can know like and and you know it has to do with the spins and, and all that stuff like I, i've seen songs that have blown up on spotify that a lot of people don't know there's there's uh there's just i don't know it's it's definitely still that the 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 radio is is the one that's dictating a hit. Yeah, but there should does it hurt a little bit the same way like obviously the the record with Ray Shimmer didn't get to reach its full potential. There's songs that you love on Spotify that are great, could be hits, mm -hmm. but they never end up seeing as much light as they deserve. But those I mean like I don't think everything needs to be a hit as well. Like I think that 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 you know, there's like a song for me, not butter, that's a hit for me. Because for me, going to my show and seeing the fans react to that song the way that they react. That's what matters. That's what matters, to me at least. Um, like, and, and I think for most artists that should be the same thing too. I don't think, like, I understand it's amazing to get a radio hit. Like, a lot of people knowing your song, that's amazing. Who would have thought, you know? Um, who would have thought a bunch of people would know Get Low, get, that's my voice too, <laughs> you know? Who would have thought that people would know that song all around the world? That's an incredible thing. But I think, like, for me, when I play at shows, like, seeing that reaction to those certain songs, that's a hit. Like, and I think a lot of people that are making music, they should do that as well. Like, you can have a hit and, and it can not go over well at, at a show. Like, I remember I was talking to Matt and Kim and they have... Um, that big sync record. What's, yeah, what is I it called? I, I always forget the name. I know the instrumental right yes. out the gate. But they had to make a new version of that. Because when they play that, when they would play that original song live, their show is so hyped up. Yeah. It would never actually like. It would be a come down. It would be a come down. So they had to make a new version of it. So it's it's funny talking about hits like that because they they work in a different space. Yeah, but low fits into your set. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was like, thank God for Fast and the Furious putting that in the trailer. That's what really got that to be a hit for me. But by the way, those syncs matter. Oh yeah. 
I mean, Bun Up the Dance is another record that, for me, live show wise, mm-hmm. hit, and then it also got synced into like this carnival commercial. Game changer. Amazing. Would you go on a cruise? I've been on a couple of them. I've been on a bunch of EDM cruises. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, there has to be like an EDM, they're, like they're dance fun, music man. cruise. They're definitely fun. A lot of, uh, I mean, the only thing you can do is drink on them, so <laughs> be prepared for that. <laughs> That's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Have you uh, seen your streaming numbers go up since you joined the vlog squad? Um, but are, are you an official member? I think, I, th- I would have to ask David. Should I call him? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me call David. I hope this, he picks up. This is very exciting. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, Are you going to FaceTime him that, or phone call I hate him. that it, it goes to, for some reason, sometimes it, my FaceTime just goes to what? I don't want to call him on WhatsApp. <laughs> I want to FaceTime. Oh, there it is. You're a man of the world with WhatsApp. Let's see. David is he a FaceTimer, though. A what? He is a FaceTimer. He lo- <laughs> yeah. David. Are you okay? Yeah. Hey, I, I'm doing a radio interview on, on Zach's show right now. Hi. They they asked if I was in the vlog squad. I just wanted to know uh, if I was. Hey, man, you call me about this uh, privately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That sounded like a nice no. I think that, I, no, I think that means the contract's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Oh, this Thanks, is exciting. David. I love you. Just remember, Dylan, just remember you have to send over 50% of all your earnings from all your songs ever. Easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll see you. All right, bye. Bye, David. <laughs> That's very special. Yeah, he's awesome. How did you meet him? Um, I met him through my friend Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Oh, the haircut guy. Yeah. Yeah. The haircut guy. He invited me over to get a haircut, and I don't want to go, because I'm... He's, real, he's actually good at giving he, haircuts. I just feel like he'd f*** my hair on purpose. No, no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. He, he's good. Okay. He's legitimately good. I, I was did, did, I was pleasantly surprised. He cut your he's hair? A great, yeah. He's great at it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a good barber. Good. It's okay. a barber, though. Okay, got it. You're going to get a barber cut. Oh. Um, But Lonely. Jeff was in one of my music videos with Party Favor, and I met him... A, so I met him a long time ago, and then... I I always thought he was really funny. He always did like really funny self-deprecating like workout videos <laughs> that just like same humor. So um, one time he posted a, a video of like him working out and I was like, dude, I want to work out with you. Like I actually did too. But he was he was doing like fake workout videos, <laughs> but I thought they were real. <laughs> <laughs> so like it was still, it wasn't as self-deprecating, but so like it confused me. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, he was working out with, I think, Jason at the time. And I was like, oh, I want to come work out. So he thought I was asking to be in a video. So then we ended up making a video of me working out and <laughs> and uh, playing Coachella. But through that, Jeff was like, dude, you got to meet David. Like, you'd love hanging out with us. Like, you have the same humor as us, blah, 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 blah. So then I, met, I had met David a long time ago, briefly. So um, when I saw him again, I was like, hey, yeah, blah, 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 blah. I met you when you were dating Liza. And he's like, oh, yeah, I remember you. Oh, cool. And then just... Friends. He's just yeah. He's just an easy person to hang out with, and like he's just constantly doing things. So Dude. just kind of trail around. Yeah, it's like always on. Always. His yeah, entire yeah. life. I, I like David a lot. I've seen my concerts where he's not holding his camera, and he has phantom candom, camera syndrome. <laughs> yes. Where his his <laughs> hand sits where the camera would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he starts getting anxious if there's he doesn't have a camera and it's not worthy to be filmed. Yeah. I I respect his hustle. And oh, his me dedication too. is. On he edits relenting. Oh, everything too. Twenty four seven. So he's like one of the best editors. Amazing. Yeah. It's really in, the best four minutes and twenty seconds of my life. I know. Uh, week. Sorry. Every time I watch him, it's it's so funny. I like just when the when it ends, I just I'm like I'm smiling. Yeah. And I realize that I'm smiling. I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're really good though. Like no, they're good. each time, I end up smiling the 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 whole time. Do you want to be in the vlog squad more? Do you feel like you're not getting en- enough representation? I I mean it's it's tough. He'll like he'll hit me up uh, at like six p.m. or something when I'm coming home from the studio and be like, "Come over right now!" <laughs> like, dude, I, I just finished working on a song where I just had to keep pressing pl- pause and play over to mix eh. something. Like, I don't really want to. And so that's it's that's the tough energy. part because I do love. I love doing the videos and being in the videos and doing the videos with them, but it is a lot of energy. Like you got to, cause we don't know what we're filming ever. We're just kind of going around. There is like certain bits that we want to do. Like the latter bit that we did, like 
that day that day I had sadly gone over <laughs> when he told me to <laughs> and they were all like we should do this ladder bit and I was like okay let's do it and then we did it <laughs> you're not as young as he once was once no were. exactly and it made me realize that like, I'm, I'm an old man Jason I give him a lot of credit he keeps up I the hustle that's I'll tell him actually whenever he'll tell me to go somewhere I'll be like is Jason there? Yeah. Okay, if, if Jason's he, there, I have to go. If he can do it. If, if Jason's going, I ha uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll always tell Jason too. I'm like, Jason, if you're there, I will swear I'll be there. You are my you are my partner in crime. I love Jason. That he's so funny. I, he is. I'm so happy that like he is such really a gift. genuinely funny and like yeah, and just the hustle in him mm -hmm. makes me so happy that that he him and David found each other. Yeah, they, they're match made in heaven. Yep. And I love I love him and his kids are. Cool. Yeah. Jason Ash. Respect, bro. Respect. Magic is real. So Magic is the, real. Did the streaming numbers go up? That was a serious question. Um, I think on Get Low, they like, when, because we did his birthday thing, I think they definitely like peaked a, a couple, like 50K or something like that. that. That's good, right? Yeah. Giddy up. Yeah, definitely. How does it feel being a part of the revival and revitalization of ABBA's Dancing Queen? Oh, man. I love it. That you've I mean I love that song. I was a big Mamma Mia fan when I was younger. <laughs> like I love I went and saw uh Mamma Mia with my mom and her friend in in like Broadway. <laughs> That's and awesome. I remember all those songs. I was just like, these are great records. Dude, well, I didn't say records at the time. Like, these are great songs. <laughs> <laughs> Can we listen to them again? <laughs> like the dun 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 dun. Uh, it was just yeah. So um There's something about that music. That always yeah, it always is just like it, rem it reminds me of that that really fun time about going to that Broadway show with my mom. So, um, and it's just incredible to see it, you know, it just, it's timeless. it still hits. Everyone sings it. But see, like, records like that, are we creating those today? Um, yeah, man. Gucci gang, Gucci gang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Lil Pump and, and, and he, he definitely is like in his own. I, I, I still think those records like are, they're fun club records, but let me think, man. I like, I don't know. Is that Gautier record it too oh, too wow. far to talk about? Because I feel like when you hear that song, that's like a, a record. When it comes on, you're like, man, I love that record. Totally. Someone I that used to know. That one's timeless. Yeah. Um, definitely oh. fewer, fewer and farther in between. Um, and how do you really know? Like, what's the test? Like, how, how many? I feel years like losing it will be a timeless record. Losing it by Fisher will be that record when, like, ten years down the line, when you hear that I'm losing it, you're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I remember this one, baby!" <laughs> like, it's gonna be a wedding record for sure. <laughs> That's when you know you have a timeless record if it turns into a wedding rec you're record. You're right. When yeah. the wedding DJs dictate it, yes, it Tonto is. jump on it, timeless. <laughs> um, a little bit softer now. What's that record? Uh, uh, yeah. Jump, shout. Shout. Yep. Yeah. Um, let me think. Uh, YMCA, Macarena. Do you think Bartender's a, a timeless record? Maybe that's only for me. <laughs> the, the, the Bartender. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, for some reason, it came into my mind for a wedding <laughs> of like, go to the bar. Ooh, we're playing Bartender. Buy you a drink, T-Pain. Buy you a drink. That's timeless. That hits. That's a, f Get, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, Lil John. Oh yeah, um, to the got low, 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 yes, low, low, yeah. Low. Wait, no, that's that's a uh, apple bottom jeans. That's a timeless record. Oh, yeah, you're right. That apple is timeless. Boots with the fur. Boots with the fur. With the fur. Thank you, Florida, for that record. Um, wait, the, the get low. Yes. Um, but to the window. What? Why, yeah. To no, the wait. Low. Is that the record? Yeah. yeah. Is it to the sweat drop okay, down yeah. them? To the ball. <laughs> Make all them bitches crawl. What else? The whistle. The whisper song. <laughs> Or, Which is the funniest record that's timeless, yeah. actually. Because the vo imagine going into the studio and being like, guys, I got it. <laughs> it's a song about waiting until you see my penis. <laughs> and we're going to whisper it the whole song. I mean, <laughs> you know what? It's going to be big. I think I got a beat for that. <laughs> 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 I do wonder if that beat was just sitting there they crafted from an original nothing. Like, I've had it for for years now and I was just waiting, I've been for, the waiting right thing. for the right vocal and I always knew it needed whispers. I wish there was like a re I feel like Chappelle's show should come back and just do <sighs> like songs that are like that remade. Your lips Because it God's would be ears. so funny to see that in the studio. Totally. Oh, he should 
obviously the Netflix special was it was good. Yeah, but I would love to see that show come back. I would love I would love that show to come back. When you look at your list of goals, music obviously on it, but like TV and animated series, like sketch comedy show, like do you want to tackle those types of things or are those types to. of things dead? Uh, sketch comedy is tough though. Um, I've always wanted to do a sketch comedy show. I've always wanted to do my own version of Kids in the Hall or oh. SNL or Mad TV or you know all those. Um, Where is it? They don't well, exist They don't today. exist anymore. Yeah. Like, think about it. It's so... And this kind of goes back to what we were talking about, where, like, Key and Peele, when it was on, nobody cared. Yeah. When it left, Everybody everyone cared. cared. Brooklyn right. Nine-Nine was about to leave, and everyone was like, <laughs> no! They were about to leave because no one cared. And now they care. No one realizes that. It's so weird. We but, yeah, like, Amy Schumer show, that doesn't... That, that, that was a sketch comedy show that's not on there anymore. The um the one with uh what's his name? He does he does Big Mouth now on um Oh, Nick Kroll. Nick Kroll, he had a show on Comedy Central yeah. that was a sketch show. Oh, that was so a lot good. Of, yeah. Publicity. That one was amazing. <laughs> and all those sketch shows they work for like I don't know, I don't know actually cuz I don't know the numbers behind them, but I feel like they always kind of fail because that whenever you go to any place and you're like I want to do a sketch show, they're like we're not buying sketch shows. Yeah. We're not buying a sketch show. Sketch shows don't work. Well, they're expensive. They're expensive, and, yeah. But also the gauge of success is different. So the, the conversation I've had a couple times with people is like the way we try to – the way those shows exist today are different than before, mm -hmm. right? So like Shane Dawson changes the way a documentary is put out into the world. Mm -hmm. David Dobrik changed some sector of comedy. I could go as far as saying parts of that is a combination of reality and sketch comedy. Yeah. Without the crazy costumes, depending on the day, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a different version palatable to an entirely new generation. Absolutely. No, that is nail on the head. That just shows you how much that, that like, YouTube really is the the area for being, like, if you want to do sketch comedy, you can do it on YouTube. And then once you find the cadence for it to work, like, I feel like I've been hanging out with these guys, Charlie's and Trevor Wallace. They, they do a lot of... They do a lot of those videos. They so good they're AirPods. Doing, they're doing yeah. Love Trevor. But so I think like that's showing you those are sketch comedy segments. Totally. But they're just one thing in the bite-sized form for kids to go watch, and it's completely different. It's not you know it, that that I think is actually what sketch comedy is now. But it's not sketch yeah. comedy because it's just one video. You do it once a month or once a week. Yeah. You upload a new video. So. It is definitely that the it kind of like is what happened with streaming where you don't buy music anymore you stream it singles so I think that's it's just what the internet does to things now or just you know any new form of technology like the TV messed up how Broadway was consumed you know <laughs> you're, you're Broadway right. is just those bastards thing that you may go to now <laughs> in New York when you're lucky that's usually the only place or LA at the is it the Pantages yeah look you, yeah look at you a theater buff yeah. You go, you go and see Mamma Mia once with your mom and his, her friends. You know, shout out to those people though, like because it's 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 very fulfilling. Oh, also, like Jordan Fisher, he's he acts and and but his favorite thing to do is to go on to, and do Broadway. Bro, eight shows a week. Broadway throughout history has crafted some of the greatest performers our mm -hmm. world will ever know. To get up there and to do two shows in a day, to understand that anything you do or say up there, there are no mistakes, there are no take twos. Uh -uh. I've. I've been blessed Wild. to talk to a lot of people, the most experienced live performers, both television, movie, whatever it is, they come from Broadway. Yeah. I, hands down. It's true. I mean, there's no f***ing tracks. Didn't Steve Carell come from Broadway, I believe? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if there's Maybe. a- Maybe. Th Give I'm that pretty a sure he. I'm pretty sure he came from Broadway. But there's a lot- there's yeah. A lot of people have. There's a lot of people that were like randomly doing that and then switched into- Dude- into TV. The, the first example in my head is like Ariana Grande. Oh, yeah. 13 the musical. Wasn't Her, Zac Efron on Broadway no. as well? He didn't sing. Did you know that? Well, maybe as a young child. Nick Jonas was on Broadway too. Oh, wow. As a baby. Did you know as that? As a baby. Yeah. <laughs> very, they wheeled him out straight from the womb <laughs> onto a Broadway stage. I, I don't know why I was just thinking about baby singing. Just, Sorry. <laughs> I was like, baby Nick Jonas. Just, Nick Jonas' we current head on a tiny body. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe still with big arms. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so full head, full arms, tiny body. Absolutely. That's the Nick Jonas I, I picture now. <laughs> Did he come from? No. I can't find anything. I typed in Broadway, so I could just not. Steve Carell Broadway? That's what I looked oh, up. Oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry. 
No, but, but he might have come from Second City in Chicago. Second City in Chicago, so stage performances. Maybe. I just think there's something about Broadway. There's something about live stage. There's something stage. about performing on stage in front of people that causes you to have that ability to... It, it's almost like rapping. Like, if you're able to freestyle rap... And keep going. That's the same thing with comedy, and that has the same thing to do with that live performance. You're, uh, you're always grasping to some weird thing in your brain to make sure that you have something to say that makes sense. And that will either be funny or keep it moving forward keep it moving forward improv exactly improv Steve Carell was in Chicago and Stephen Colbert was his understudy oh <sighs> wow that's learn something new every day from the internet <laughs> <laughs> magic is real magic is real <laughs> truth <laughs> last, told you <laughs> last two records come in the 15th yeah the 15th so by the time this is out into the world yes. listen to them go listen to them link gonna be in the description um what are you thinking? Can I okay. just say something great? Yeah. Before you came in, Zach was like, Dan, take lead on this. You know, me and Dylan, you know, we have very similar humor. Uh-huh. And I haven't got to say a good damn word. It. You really did it. I'm sitting yeah. here. I know it's been an hour because I have to piss my pants. <laughs> and I know that's when it gets that hour. Zach, but yeah, Zach, Zach said, and I just, I don't know. I could talk to Zach all day. Well, that's the thing. Zach I mean, likes to too. talk. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, you and me could talk for a long time. Definitely. Clearly, it's really working out for us. But, but seriously, every time I come in here, it's like the most... Easy, fun. I like. I love talking about the things we talk about because it's I, it's stuff I'm always thinking of. Well, it makes me happy because I really enjoy talking to you because you do everything. I think it's very <laughs> rare that you find somebody who could do everything and and keep them all these plates spinning at a consistent speed while still being ahead of what's happening. Try my best. But you see, here's what happened. I well say done. one word and he just takes it and just starts talking again. <laughs> yeah, we just took it back. That's exactly what way, happened. This is called improv. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I grasped to something. I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> Daniel, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> Good to see you, Dylan. Good to see you. You know, it's always yeah. a pleasure. It's always. You make us so happy. <laughs> Good. By the way, are we still totally going to like just brush off the fact that we had a guest appearance from the David Dobrik? I feel like we shouldn't give him any more glory. We're done. He he he's just one people's choice. His ego's Th probably through the roof. Through the roof right now. I can only imagine. Yeah, if I go to his house, he's just going to beat me with the 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 People's Choice poll. That <laughs> a head so large it's coming out of his Tesla. <laughs> wow. No, he's, get the to, he's definitely like the most level-headed person. <laughs> what were we gonna say? I was gonna say get we didn't get in. to talk about no nut November, which we're in the middle oh, of. Yeah. We didn't get to talk about no shave number. You got that porn stash going so got, on. Yeah, I got the Movember going oh, on. Um, no nut November. Uh, I what, what posted that? a video. You don't know what nut, no nut November You're is. Not a lot of nut. We, we, no, you nut. can't eat nuts. No, yes. no, no. Oh my God. <laughs> you, are you serious? <laughs> What is No Nut November? Are we going nutless? <laughs> no, just talk this one out for yourself. <laughs> I love this. I love it. No Nut November. Yes. Don't think about it. So, Do don't think about it as nuts. Think about it as... Like donuts? Like no, no. nut? No. <laughs> no nut. Nut. No. No nut. I don't... What, uh, can Nona. Somebody? No. Don't... You so, can think about Nona to not nut. Oh my god, so you're not having sex. Oh, you're not jerking it. <laughs> <laughs> But I posted a video that I failed, and it was the future me that came to to see me <laughs> and tell me that if I didn't do the deed, men would be able to time travel. <laughs> the government would somewhat be um, dismantled, but that Gerald would be president. Rightfully so. But that's why I decided that I had to do the deed, because Gerald can't be president. Hmm. I, so Wow. That's saying something. Yeah. <laughs> because where we're at right now in politics is something else. I'd much rather have a pinata. Oh, any day. <laughs> any day. But it must, I mean, it's good to know that you're not the master of your own domain. You gave in. <laughs> I understand. I get it. Dude, I probably couldn't go a day. Anyway. Yeah. How long did you last? Oh, no, I was doing it as a joke. <laughs> oh, so you didn't I really... didn't last one day. Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's why we made the video. <laughs> November 1st came around and I was like, I'm sorry, soldiers. <laughs> I have not, I've let you down. Stay strong. <laughs> but you're, you're going to keep to this no, no, no shave November? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do this for sure. This, this is for a good cause. Well, I want to shave you know. the beard. Just keep the mustache. I, oh, well. Are you going to do it know, all? This is going to grow back in and then November is going to be over. So I'll be back to like having, a, having my beard back in. I do miss my beard. You have thick beard? Like, do you like? Yeah. Have you ever had like a thick, thick beard? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You usually do, but like, it, it, it doesn't get I long. One time I had like a really long one. Yeah. How long ago? Um, three years ago. Yeah. Maybe four years ago. I really know you when it was like. Yeah. That, that time when I look back at pictures and I'm like, that's a bad idea. 
<laughs> I like to keep it like a, a little bit kempt. No, this is nice. A little bit well kempt. It's yeah, not, it's not like baby boy. Exactly. It's like like right here. Cool I, man. I like this. I like the the scruff and the the mm. mustache. Looks good. Thanks. Dan approved. Yeah, look. Makes your jaw. First of all, stop that. Second of all, jawline check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The jawline looks good from this angle. <laughs> good. You're Thank full you. throttle influencer now. If you don't show full, off your jawline. Full jaw throttle line, TikTok influencer. <laughs> follow me on TikTok. I got all the jawline all day. I, I love it, man. It's it's. Do you do you ever get sucked into it like really and then forget that you're watching it? I, yeah, like, I just scroll for hours and then like I, I don't. I'm like, what am I watching? That algorithm. I have it gets never it. seen such a good algorithm. Props to the Chinese government <laughs> or whatever they're doing because I legitimately thirty minutes will fly by and I will be like. You like you go. I'll almost have like an out of body experience where I'm just watching TikToks and then I'll come to and be like, I just watched that for 30 minutes. I legitimately just flipped through my phone and didn't nothing. You like I got texts coming in. Don't I don't care. <laughs> Jawline check. <laughs> TikTok hole. <laughs> Big Frida on uh, this project too. Yes, it deserves everybody's ear. Big Frida's f- dope. She's inc- if you haven't seen her live, holy crap! Mind blowing. Mind blowing. We played a show in Paris around 2013, no, 2014 or something like that. Wow. Like, just the most amount of energy, dancing, and on the mic the whole time. These people don't speak English. <laughs> and they love it. And she, yeah, just because, she, like, she is that type of person that if, it, it reminds me of this, this guy Lunas, like, one of my favorite DJs as well. When they got on stage... No, they don't care if anyone's there or if 10,000 people are there. They're going to do exactly what they're going to do for those people. And they're going to do it their way. And they're going to like it. You can see the intensity when she goes on. And same with Lunas. Lunas isn't as, like, intense, but he just dances. Like, he's so in his own music that he dances and he's a good dancer that everyone's just, like, you'll just everyone will start being like, what the f***? It's intoxic. Yeah, like, it's intoxicating. intoxicating. That's exactly what Big Frida is. When I saw her live, I was like, "This is one of the best shows I've seen." Just because you're, you're in, you're in a, you're in the tunnel of Big Frida, and nothing else is there. That's a, by the way, that's a true talent. Absolutely. To make I can't even do that. Like that's. <laughs> <laughs> but do you feel sometimes like, I can? But I mean, not as like she. What do you have to do then, like like so on she's fire? just great on the mic. Yeah. Like Diplo, I think is one of the one of those dudes. That he's he's like. He's like 60, 40 on the mic. Some, sometimes I've, I've heard some shows where it's like he's definitely not having the best day of like what he was thinking. To say. <laughs> <laughs> but usually, I, actually, you know what? I'll give him more than that. I'll give him 80, 80, 20. He's 80 percent like amazing on the mic. And when he's amazing, he's amazing. Like the things that he says, it just like gets the, the people to really go. Like he's the one that does the, you know, over the head with their shirts and all that. Mm. And, but uh, but it's it's tough. It's tough to get up there and pretend that that nobody's watching. And that you're going to get every single person behind you. Well, because like at the end of the day, like you have these records and the playlist you've set, you have your body. Yeah, you have your voice, but you don't want to talk too, too much exactly. because then it distracts. It's a hard art to really yeah. master. You ever you, get up there and just think like, what the hell did I just do? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's been certain times where I've literally said gibberish. <laughs> like I, in my head, I was like about to say like, I, I, I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> but that's what happens. Like literally, I was like, someone come me. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I hope no one well no one understood that so n- nothing bad maybe they thought that I just spoke Spanish or something <laughs> like dude there's been certain times where like it, yeah, it'll throw me off too cause I'll be like oh my god did everyone hear that <laughs> there's like a hundred thousand people out there yeah. you're like does everybody know that I just said nothing <laughs> The answer is yes. yes. <laughs> they all were probably like, yo, what the <laughs> Did anyone understand that? Did you catch that? Am I supposed to take my socks off now? <laughs> Just an audience of people with socks yeah. on their hands. <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> like, no, I said gibberish. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Magic is, certain times like that. Magic is real. Magic is real. Magic existed in this studio today, and I appreciate you Good. for bringing it. Am I allowed to ask one more question? Yeah, of is course. That, Zach, is that okay? Don't, ask don't patronize me and ask for permission. What, how did you, th- like, we talked about the artist, but, like, how did you think of this? Like, like I know what I need my cover to be. A unicorn um, farting. So, yeah, so it's, it's that's right. how Gerald's born, was through a unicorn fart. Oh, my God. Uh, so this is the birth of your pinata. This is the birth of Gerald in, in, in cartoon form. This wow. is remarkable. Not going to be in the 20th show. <laughs> just for me. But it was just, like, I had seen the unicorn on his Instagram 
uh, this guy Ian Stevenson, incredible. Uh, he just he, all his drawings are like really fun and really funny. Um, my friends from Pizza Slime showed me him, and there was a unicorn drawing. The original ideas that I had, because we were gonna when we were doing singles, single after single, um, the idea that I really wanted to do was I wanted to make it kind of like the old Playboy slash Mad TV covers slash the, the playboy part would be like the jokes that were in the playboy magazines back then um where it would be like weird you just see one image and it's like the humor of that would be so let's just say for body one of the ideas i had was that it would be some old woman with really saggy boobs <laughs> uh like moles you know hair and she just and she's saying to whoever the person is my body is a wonderland but at her crotch it's like glowing gold <laughs> So you're kind of like, well, blowing gold down there. And I got to get in. I got to get in. Yeah. So that was going to be the, the what I wanted the cover for body to be, which is like showing magic is a real. And then the first one for nothing to it but to do it was going to be that, you know, it was a it was going to be like a, a magician's assistant in a straight jacket. And the magician is saying to him, it's nothing. There's nothing to it but to do it. And then there was a there's going to be a tank below him with sharks and you would have to escape that. So it was going to be kind of like this like weird that. like and then we were going to make uh uh what's it called like post-it stamps i guess nobody uses mail but you know would have been cool <laughs> but we made a vinyl <laughs> of the <laughs> unicorn <laughs> so, well this worked it, it was it was so, like i had the idea as we were really starting to get to like we need art yeah so it was just going to take way too long and we didn't know if the right thing for the artist so that's when i picked the unicorn and said hey draw the rainbow he drew the rainbow i thought it looked really cool and that's when i was like oh the rainbow looks like gerald let's add the eye to the middle of that we added the eye to the middle like he's in there yeah and then that's when we were like do we want to have the name on there or not and i feel like it's better as like a piece of art rather than and like who I'd hang really looks at covers anymore like you're if right. you're gonna buy the vinyl you're buying it because you're gonna probably keep it in the case and it'll be art for you to put on the wall or something so then that's where we we're like Let's not put magic is real on there. It's just like it's a cool piece. I need this in my house. <laughs> oh, we'll get you one. We'll Thank definitely get you one. You know what? I want it in my house. I want it in my studio. Hey, why not? You should I'm get this tattooed to. on you. I don't have enough room anymore. Oh, you, everything's covered. I, well, I don't want to do this leg. I could do this leg. What? Why? Why? Why are you anti that leg? Because <sighs> then I'll literally be full of tattoos. <laughs> And my mom will be so bummed. <laughs> oh, so, you're, so your left leg is for your mom? Yeah, and I also got mama's boy tattooed here, so she would be, like, fine with the rest of my tattoos. But, yeah, I feel bad. Like, I can definitely see that sometimes she's like, I miss your beautiful skin. <laughs> left leg's for mom. Yeah, left leg's for mom. <laughs> That's an album title right there. Left leg's for mom. <laughs> but, yeah, left leg's for mom. <laughs> Final thought, Daniel? Oh, no. Oh, actually. Yeah. You look good I in that saw hat. Thank you. My friend, my fr my good friend Dylan gave it to me. Yeah. I saw that you went on a little Twitter unfollowing spree and we made the cut. Mm. You didn't unfollow us. Did you notice that? Wait, that's a huge Did I deal. And then I refollowed. You refollowed. Okay, yeah. cool. We made the cut. I appreciate that. So that was a horrible decision. <laughs> oh, I'm sure people got angry. I did at you. it. Yeah. They, a lot of people got angry and I did it as like a promo to this music video that I did with Jimmy Tatro and Tatro. I don't know how to say his last name. You are so cool. Jimmy Tatro. He's Jimmy dope. Tatro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we did this, this joke uh um darts video and we made this fake uh account called pdspn which is the um <laughs> pro professional darts association i don't remember the, what the thing is professional darts association some uh, there's no a in that anyways <laughs> someone will know it um <laughs> so uh we made the the account for that and then i i made it so that it was, i was only following the that account and then jimmy and anna makes sense and i did that on instagram too and the funniest thing, too, for Instagram is that little did I know, if you go on an unfollowing spree on Instagram and only follow a couple accounts, it'll actually affect the whole way your Instagram works the algorithm. and how the algorithm sends things out to people. So we hit up Instagram after we were, like, promoting it. It was, like, like I think after, like, 10 hours, I only had, like, 5,000 views, which for that is super low for, yeah. like, promoting a music video and having just, like, a very easy, clean five-second clip. <laughs> And our friend over at Instagram was like, yeah, it's because you unfollowed everybody. Instagram thinks that your account's probably like hacked or going haywire. So it's not it's pushing, not pushing to out. anybody. So like, <laughs> I was like, holy f <laughs> this was a bad idea. <laughs> I had to sit there all day and refollow everybody. <laughs>
Instagram, or I mean, for Twitter, I don't uh, think it was the same, but it was different. also just a bad idea because people were like, oh, it's like that. And I'd be like, no, I was promoting a music video. Still to this day, I think a couple people I haven't uh, followed back and they've been like, you unfollowed me, man. Head. I'm like, no, I swear I was promoting this music video. It didn't go to plan. So joke's on me now. <laughs> I, at least you did the unfollow with good intentions. Yeah, it wasn't that I wanted to unfollow everybody and was like disconnected uh, from. We've from, been cutting some follow people that like follow sprees that were done in like with with malintent. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I hate everyone, dude. And and I I've I've been cut from people's Instagram <laughs> feeds. Give me a minute. It's the truth. <laughs> it's my day. I'm gonna accept my truth. Don't worry. I'm here for you guys. Thank you, Dylan, for I keeping us you. in mind and supporting <laughs> us nonstop. It is the respect, appreciation, and support is mutual. I love you guys. No more thoughts from you. No, I'm just going to go make a TikTok now. I'm inspired. Okay. There you go. Let's do it. Thank you. <laughs> I've been begging him for a week and a half. Dylan Fritz. Make it <laughs> count. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, guys. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore. So we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications. And all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.